Hi, it's Mark at Mark's Motorcycle Parts and today we're going to set the valve clearances on the K1600. So you can see that we've already got the biking pieces ready to start and I've taken all the bodywork off, dropped the radiator and I've got the cam cover off. Uh, first thing to say is that uh, when you get inside there it's actually quite daunting, there's an awful lot of it. But when you break it down it's really no more complicated than a, a single or a twin even. There's just several times that amount of, of engine going on in there. But, uh, like I say, once you get past the initial shock of just how much there is, it's no more difficult to work on than any other bike. So, uh, we've removed all the bodywork. We've got the uh, spanner on the end of the crank, ready to start turning the crank. And uh, we're always going to turn it anti-clockwise from the direction we're looking at it. Now on the left-hand side of the bike. Uh, if you look across the top of the engine there, you can see that I've uh, tied off as much, much of the wiring as possible. We don't really want the wiring moving around uh, we don't want any of the hoses to come down and get in the way, partly because they're they're in the way of us doing the work, but also that uh, being right behind the front wheel, these sort of things attract dirt. So I've given all these pieces a, a wipe off before tying them up out of the way. Uh, we don't want them falling down, because if they fall down and get in the way of the engine, then they're likely to drop little bits of dirt into the top of the engine, and, and uh, you don't want muck getting inside there, uh, into the oil on the cams. So, quick look around the other side. And you can see that, again... Everything's nice and clear and accessible. A little bit later on, we're going to be needing to get to the cam, uh, cam chain tensioner, and he's right on the side of the engine there. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is to uh, go through all the valves, one at a time, and we're just going to note down what the clearances are. Now, rather than measuring everyone individually, which becomes a bit of a faff, we're going to just measure whether they're above the small clearance and below the large clearance in the tolerance. And this will be a, a, be a bit more obvious when you get th through the book, get to the relevant page, uh, which lays out a little table of what you need to set. So I've turned the engine so that number one is at top dead centre. Well, we can see that because we can see the exhaust cam here and just about make out the lobe of the inlet cam at the back of the engine there, which means that both valves are completely closed. And at that point, I'm now going to measure the clearances on that, on that cylinder, and we're measuring the first and second valves on the exhaust and on the intake. Now after cylinder number one, the next one we need to check is number five. So with a spanner on the end of the crankshaft, I'm going to turn this, cylinder, this one so that we can see both the intake and exhaust cams And what you will find is that when the peak of the exhaust if the exhaust cam is visible there, you can't see it, but you can feel the peak of the inlet is in a similar position. It's on the back of the cam shaft bolt down bridge. So we repeat the process with our feeler with our effectively our go and no go feeler gauges. And we're looking again to see that the intake is between 0.13 and 0.23, and the exhaust is between 0.23 and 0.33. So I take my feeler gauges again, 0.13, and I can feel that that's fitting nicely. The 0.13 is so flexible, you don't actually need to, to bend that one. He slips in and he flexes on his own on the way in. The thicker ones just need a bit of help to get in the gap. And that one is not going in, which is brilliant. That one is not going in. Excellent. Now, 0.23. Yep. That fits. Yep, that fits. 0.33. No, that's not going anywhere. And nor is that. So you can see it doesn't take a great deal of time to work through these files. We've done two cylinders already. And the next cylinder we're going to look at is number three. So uh, number three, that's this one here. 
So again, I'm turning the crankshaft with a spanner and I'm looking for that cam on the exhaust to just peep out from underneath. And there, I can start to see that now. There he is. Just by way of double checking, I'm gonna put a finger at the back there. And I can feel the nose of that cam. Now I've checked my number three cylinder and uh, all the clearances are intolerance there. So we're gonna to move to number six next, which is nice and easy. That's the one right on the end. So we can see the cams turning nice and readily now. So I'm turning with spanner on the end of the crankshaft. And we can see that the cams are in the right position. Looking right on the end. Both cams well away from the base, from the, uh, the valves. So, 0.13. So 0.13 fits nicely, and we'll try the second valve, and yeah, that's in there, lovely. So check that the 0.23 does not fit. No, he's not going in. He's not going in either. So keep the point two three to hand. I'm going to stick that in the exhaust. And that fits in that one. That's good. And it fits in that one. Excellent. Checking with the point three three. No. That's good. And that's good as well. So neither of those valves, we'll take the 0 0.33, they're both intolerance. So we're gonna turn the, continue turning the crank, and we're looking for cylinder two to be at top dead center now. So, uh, here we go. You can see the valves nice and easily from here. There we go. So I'm going to move around the other side again. And point one three, that fits. And that fits. Excellent. That doesn't. doesn't. Do you know I might be able to get in underneath here? Yeah we can get in from the bottom as well if we want to for probing the exhaust cl uh, clearances. Two three fits and three three does not fit. So we've done five cylinders and the last one is cylinder number four. So we're going to turn the crankshaft Again, using the spanner, and here's number four. Here's number four coming up onto the correct position. Try a little bit more. Here we are. And again, just double check at the back. Yep, that's fine. I can feel the cam in there. So the first thing we need to do is to bring the engine such that uh, cylinders one and six are at top dead center. And we do that by rotating the engine, again using the bar on the end of the crankshaft. And I'll bring the engine round and I'll show you where we need to get to with the cams. 
So we're watching the scams on this cylinder and we're bringing it around such that both cams are on the base circle and these slots are going to line up. And when they do line up, you'll find that a four millimeter strip of metal will sit across the cylinder head, engaging in the slots. There we go. And at the same time, you'll see that a six millimeter pin will go into the hole down here underneath the crankshaft. Now you notice I've got a drill bit here, I'm putting the shank end in, it's important to put the shank and not the, the twist drill end in. That goes all the way in and it engages between the crankshaft and crank case and effectively locks the crank. And you can see that that's gone in by about 35 millimeters. We're now in the right position to carry on. So now we're removing the cam chain tensioner and we're just backing them out a quarter of a turn each so the bolts come out nice and uniformly and you'll find that as soon as you release tension on the bolts the cover will spring up and will come out against the pressure of the internal spring. Now they're loose we're just going to finish them off with fingers a bit quicker than using the span of the whole way. And as the bolts come out Take them away, lift the cover away with its integral o-ring and then we lift out the tensioner itself. And now we're going to remove all six of the spark plugs. So with our 14mm socket And because the plugs are quite a long way down inside the head, once you get to that stage, you might just need a pair of long nose pliers just to gently grip the plug and lift it out. So now I've removed the spark plugs from cylinders one, three, and six, and I've screwed the tool that I've made into those spark plug holes and that's threaded in finger tight so that it seats on the spark plug uh, mounting face and on top I've put the nut which is going to sit against the camshaft support casting and I've backed that up with a nut which is turned down just finger tight it doesn't need to be tight on top of that casting and then we work our way across the casting removing all of the nuts So the first two nuts we're going to remove completely are the two at the very right hand end of the engine that hold the rubbing strip for the cam chain.
and after removing the cam chain rubbing strip we're now going to work our way across the engine removing the rest of the nuts completely now. Now in order to help us align the camshafts when we replace them, I put a line across the two adjacent teeth before removing the camshafts. Now I've removed all of the nuts now holding down the camshaft support casting and we're just going to uniformly lift the nuts on our three threaded bars so we can bring that casting up nice and uniformly. So quarter of a turn at a time. And we're just going to lift that cast in nice and uniformly so we lift the cams away from the valve springs, take away all the tension and then we're going to lift the casting out. So you can see that we've now got the cams out and all that remains to do is to remove the buckets that need, need replacing with the different sizes so that we can measure them. So to do that we take our suction stick and we reach in and we pull the bucket out. Now what we're aiming for is to be able to put the camshaft bridge on in a minute and pull it down such that when the camshafts are pulled down tight and the cam chain is pulled tight, the slots across the end of the camshafts line up. And you'll notice at the moment they're set so that they're both a little bit that way with respect to the cylinder head and this is so that when they that when we pull them down using the camshaft bridge and then we take up the, ch the tension in the chain they'll rotate back very slightly and they'll line up level with the cylinder head so that's our next step now you'll notice now that we've uh, put the camshafts back in We've aligned the slots at the end with the top of the cylinder head and I've put the camshaft support bridge back on and I've also screwed in the three uh, tools that we've made which we're going to use now to pull the, the camshaft support casting down with the camshafts onto the, uh, the top of the cylinder head. So we're just going to put half a turn at a time onto these three nuts so we pull things down nice and uniformly until the camshaft's lined up. Now I've reached the point where I've put all the nuts on the camshaft holding down casting and I've torqued them down 10 newton meters all round and although it doesn't look like it, axis is actually very good around the back of those so you can get a torque wrench on every individual one which is always a good thing. And I've pulled out the pin that locks the crankshaft and we're going to give the engine a complete turn now through two revolutions and we're going to check that after we come round at the end of our second revolution that everything lines up properly and the slot across the end of the, of the camshafts is still in the correct position so that when we put the pin in a second time round we can get our, 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 our bar in to confirm the camshafts are correctly aligned and this just gives us a belt and braces approach to be sure that we've got the engine correctly put back together before we put the covers on. Now as you turn the engine you need to be very careful the whole time and feel for any resistance to motion because if there is anything which isn't right, you'll feel it. And unlikely as that is, we want to stop before we do any damage. 
So I'm going around nice and slowly. And I'm not feeling any undue resistance. Now as I was turning the crankshaft round, I have my thumb on the end of the locking pin, pushing gently against it, so that as soon as we those, uh, the crankshaft lined up and was in position, such so that the, the locking pin would go in, the pin went straight in. And now if I take my piece of, of uh, four mil aluminium, I can hold that up. So that's the end of the job. Uh, if you like what you've seen, please pop across to my website that's Mark's Motorcycle Parts .co.uk, where you can buy them the book which will take you through the complete service, including getting the bodywork off and finishing off from this stage back to riding the bike again. Thanks for watching.